Relegation. Humiliation. Intrepidation. Time for redemption. No, I'm not gonna be a part of no little game. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not gonna be a part of no little game. No, no. The lights are on. And then we step into the room, I catch a glimpse of your eyes And you say that it's too soon, but I am ready To challenge your immortal throne And I'll make you jump faster than a stone Stephen, you're clearly a heathen This poison gas that I'm breathing is quite hard But this facade will leave you red-faced and wheezing I can tell that you're seething from all the steam you're unleashing Just like a kettle, your metal will have its pressure decreasing I cannot lie, I know last season wasn't great My head was all over the place and I was in a state But this time around I'm making absolutely no mistakes And now the title's handed to me on a plate Gonna be part of your little game No I'm not No I'm not No I'm not Gonna be part of your little game No I'm not No I'm not, no I've been out wrestling with stuff like I'm Triple H Only fuck with twins, that's a triple date Call me Roman Reigns cause I'm getting so much hate Bitch I'm Swagnet, all of you should think I'm great Listening to my flows and you all love me Got so much swag just like a horsey I'm the best player one day you'll see I unlock your bitch like a cleft key I've sold drugs to all the other coaches Ask Shroom Raver how his nose is Come to me and ask for my prices I promise I'm not part of ISIS Oh, oh Gonna be a part of your little game No I'm not No I'm not No I'm not Gonna be a part of your little game No I'm not No I'm not No I'm not No How's it going guys? My name is Wanty Binet and welcome to PPL D2 Season 4 Week 1 for the Birmingham Spritzy against Chicago Bewares. Now, this week's video is going to be a little bit different because of two reasons. The first reason being that I've been caught a little bit off guard this season with league format. Uh, I, I wasn't really expecting... Um, you know, this video to have to come up as late or slash early as it did. Uh, basically, it's caught me off guard. I haven't had time to record my draft analysis, which will be up ASAP. Promise, promise, promise that will be up ASAP. Probably be um, on... If this is going up Wednesday, the draft analysis will probably be on Friday. Uh, maybe Thursday if I can find some time during the day, but it will be most likely Thursday. And two, because, well... <sighs> I've got to apologise for this this video because it's going to be a team builder as well as a, a battle and that's because the battle itself, <laughs> no spoilers, but it's not the longest. It's not the longest. There's no spoilers here, but it is not the longest. So I thought I could package the two together into a sort of, you know, a different thing for once. I mean, I, I don't know if this is going against PPL rules or not, and if it is, then it will definitely not happen next week and I apologise profusely, but yeah. Uh, yeah, the team we're up against is Carson and his Chicago b -Wars. I'll probably try and pop his team up on the screen now, uh, at least what he had at the time. Because, spoilers, he makes a change <laughs> after this week. And I've planned for uh, the, the original Mon on his team, which, spoilers, he did bring. So, yeah, um, basically, the team we're bringing this week against Carson and his Chicago b -Wars, is Tapu Koko, Garchomp, Sizzle, Mega Sizzle, sorry, uh, Gigalith, Hariyama, and Silvalli. Now, the reason that I've brought these mons will be spoke about imminently. <laughs> God, I'm really off guard for this. <laughs> okay, so Tapu Koko. The reason I've got Tapu Koko here is because I looked at his team and what he had, and he had nothing to stop it. Nothing on his team could stop my ta Tapu Koko if I got it in at the right time. Uh, for example, uh, his team consists of stuff like Mega Charizard, Sizzle, Melotic, Decidueye, Omastar, Hitmontop, Braviary, 
uh, God of War, Sneasel, Torterra, nothing on that team wants to take hits from this guy, except for maybe Mega Charizard X, and even then that's not going to appreciate it. The only four moves, or the only three moves I really needed to hit his entire team neutrally or super effectively were Wild Charge, U-Turn and Brave Bird. Uh, U-Turn for momentum purposes because this guy's going to hit like a truck with 252 attack, 252 speed, Jolly. Uh, I had to go Jolly because I need to match the Jolteon's pace. Uh, and I didn't really need the fourth move, I could probably have gone with something like uh, uh, I don't know, maybe Nature's Madness in case I wanted to do half damage, but I don't like the idea of having that alongside Life Orb because you're not doing any extra damage, but you're still taking the, you know, the the damage, uh, the 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 recoil, the Life Orb recoil. I could have gone with something like maybe Toxic, but I didn't see any other reason than you know not to have Roost. Maybe even Agility could have been a thing, but I outsped slash sped Ty with his entire team anyway. And if I could identify the Scarfer early, if he had one, then I could have taken that out and then just cleaned up with uh, Tapu Koko. That seemed like a really, really good idea to bring this week, and I hope that it can do some work. Now, before I get on to my next mom, which is obviously Garchomp, I just need to say that his biggest threat to me is Mega Charizard X, because on my draft I have nothing that stops it. Absolutely fucking nothing. There is nothing on my team that stops that thing once it sets up to plus one or plus two with Dragon Dances. Nothing that can take a Flare Blitz slash Dragon Claw and retaliate. I have Alamomola which can take a plus two, but can do jack shit back to it. And if it's a Roost set with Roost, Dragon Dance, um, Dragon Claw and Flare Blitz, then I'm completely fucked. Yeah, I can't beat it. So, I've had to gear my team around dealing with that thing in the most efficient way possible. So, while I look at his team and think that Swords Dance Garchomp could do some work, because the only things that outspeed me are Jolteon and Sneasel, nothing else outspeeds um, Garchomp on his team, so I thought Swords Dance could do some work, but I needed Scarf. Because if I didn't have Scarf, I had no way of um, getting, you know, I, I, could, I would have just been beaten by, um, what would you call it, uh, pfft, being a Charizard, I would have been beaten by it at plus one. I needed a way to take it out if, like, I needed a, a insurance policy as it will. And Scarf Chomp still hits pretty hard against this team. It still does some work with Earthquake, Iron Head, Stone Edge, you know, all of that jack, all of that jazz. And yeah, I, I didn't need max speed because I only needed, if I could, oh, I can't scroll down because I've done a poor job of stuff, but if I move this down, you can see 102 speed. I needed one, uh, I needed 167 to outspeed uh, Mega Garchomp, uh, Mega Charizard at plus one, uh, and I outspeed the rest of his team with the Scarf anyway. Obviously Sneasel is a problem, but I don't expect it to come this week because I have a better matchup against Sneasel than I do uh, against, you know, a lot of his other offensive threats. Sneasel kind of gets stopped by some of them. And, uh, yeah, that, that's the thing. Uh, the next Mon... <laughs> well, obviously, I'm not going to move on to the next Mon yet. Uh, we have Earthquake, Iron Head, Fire Blast, and Stone Edge. We needed Iron Head to hit the Gardevoir, and we also do damage to Sneasel if he does, for some reason, decide to bring it. Uh, we needed Fire Blast to hit Scizor. Uh, it also does a bit of damage to Decidueye, and we have Stone Edge here. In case Braviary wants to show its ugly head and to hit Mega Charizard if it tries to switch, uh, you know, if for some reason we come up against the, the base form, we can't hit it with Earthquake. Uh, like if he switches in on my Earthquake, uh, but that, that would be silly because he'd have to Mega Evolve next turn anyway. But these were the four moves I really needed. I'm not sure what else I could have possibly brought. Maybe if we look at some of the other moves, I could possibly have brought maybe a Draco, maybe an Aerial Ace, maybe Outrage, uh, maybe Dragon Claw. I didn't really feel like I needed the Dragon Stab as much in this game because he has the Gardevoir, he has the nothing else. <laughs> he has the Scizor. Uh, I didn't feel like I wanted to be locked into Dragon Claw on a Scizor that could possibly, you know, sword stance and roost up. I'd rather be locked into maybe a Fire Blast or an Earthquake. Uh, yeah, it was just four coverage moves, whatever I needed. And on to Mega Sizz. Uh, obviously, you're, you're going to see their nicknames in a minute anyway, but yeah, um... Mega Sizz here was an interesting one for me because I wanted a Mega Sizz that could bulk, uh, not bulk up, that could take hits and then sword stance and bullet punch everything to death. If I look at his team, he has three things, or well, four things on his team that reliably, and I say reliably, no, three things on his team that 
can reliably deal with Bull Cup Mega Sizz, Mega Charizard, Sizzle, and Milotic. And Sizzle, I beat one on one because I'm bulkier than it, and I can Sword Stance and I have the Aerial Ace. Milotic, as long as it doesn't burn me, I can still do some serious damage with Aerial Ace. And Mega Charizard, which, as we know, is still a problem. And if I'm set, if I'm at plus two and it needs to happen, I can still bullet punch this thing and hurt it a lot. Uh, yeah, it's it seemed like this was the best thing because the rest of his team, Hitmontop, I beat one on one. Uh, Jolteon, I can take two Life Orb Modest Thunderbolts from it, and I can respond with a Sword Stance Bullet Punch. Um, Omastar, I can take a plus two Hydro Pump from it, get up to plus two and respond with bullet punches. Braviary might be a bit of a problem, but I think I can take a... I'm not sure. I didn't really do much calcs for Braviary, honestly, because I didn't feel like it was a good matchup to bring Braviary here. It could have really hurt me, but Gigalith kind of stops it if it doesn't pack Super Power, and if it does, then... Yeah, I, I could have been hurt, but I, I didn't really plan for it. I felt like I had too much offensively to check it. Uh, Gardevoir, Bullet Punch kills, Sneasel, Bullet Punch kills, and Torterra, Aerial Ace, really kills. So, I felt like I could, if I could get rid of the, at least two of those big three, like, if I could get rid of the Mega Charizard, and possibly Melotic, I could beat the rest of his team and sweep with Swords Dance Bullet Punch. Felt like the right course of action, and I hope it works in the game. Uh, then we have Gigalith, and the reason this guy is here is simply for two reasons. Stealth Rock, and to kill Mega Charizard at plus one. I have Stone Edge and Stealth Rock on here, literally because I'm going to get Stealth Rock up at some point, and I'm going to kill the Mega Charizard. As long as it doesn't set up to plus two, or have Will-O-Wisp, it will die to me. Because I'm not going to allow that thing any room to kill me. I'm not going to allow it any room at all to try and, you know, pull off shenanigans. So Gigalith here, <coughs> I'm used to this guy, I've used him very well, I really like Gigalith, and with Sandstream it's given me a really really nice little option to use. I've got the Smooth Rock on it because he has only got the Torterra, Sizzle and Omastar that aren't hurt by it, and Mega Charizard doesn't appreciate being worn down every turn, neither does stuff like Decidueye and Hitmontop and Braviary. Uh, but yeah, uh, Toxic, just in case Torterra wants to come in and ruin my day, I can at least Toxic that thing, maybe. Yeah, uh, this guy is literally just built to annoy the Mega Charizard and kill it in one. Because I one-shot it with Stone Edge, and I can Earthquake it if it's already at low health. Yeah, it seemed like the best course of action, and I hope it can do the work. Now, this guy was interesting, because I wanted... <sighs> I was originally planning on having Landorus or Stoutland in this role. In fact, Harry Armor is the only mon on the team that is, like, I only brought this guy because I was I was mulling between Harry Armor, uh, Landorus, Stoutland, and Alamomola. I decided with Harry Armor because I felt like I could do more to the rest of his team. If we look at what, what he has, Mega Charizard, I can kill that with a Choice Banded Close Combat. Uh, Scizor, I can kill that with a you know, choice banded, close combat slash fire punch. Malotic isn't going to appreciate it, close combat. Decidueye, fire punch. Jolteon, close combat. Hitmontop, I 1v1 with close combat. Uh, Omastar, kill it with close combat. Braviary can, can hurt me, but I can still close combat it. Basically, with this, this guy, I can kill something on his team before going down. The EVs I have are enough to take, I think, a plus two Dragon Claw from a jolly... A Mega Charizard. I think that's what it was for. I think that's what the 92 defense is. Uh, and the speed was to outspeed minimum speed Sizzle and minimum speed um, Decidueye. Because uh, if you look at the, the speed real quick, oh, let me just move that down again. We look at the speed uh, 91. Decidueye without any investment hits 90. So yeah, that, that's what that's for. And stuff and things. I felt like that was the best option for me in this match because, you know, I could... Oh my god, I'm moving it around like a bloody... don't even know. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I felt like that was the best for me in this situation because this this wasn't going to be an easy match for me. It had to be very, very carefully orchestrated. And if I could, you know, vault you turn around with um, Coco into Harry Armor, that is very, very potent. 
because then I can punch a hole through his team and it gives me options for later sweeps with Scizor or Coco. And now the, the crux of this team is Scarf Sil Valley. Now, if you if you might already know because obviously you might not know because I haven't put up the draft analysis yet, but just for your information, Sil Valley is my Z mover. That means that it can use well, it's not my Z mover. It's one of three Z movers I have, but this is the main Z mover because this is this is the one that can use support Z moves as well. And I have support passing shot as an option for the rest of the season. However, problem with that was I needed something that could possibly that could possibly deal with um, Mega Charizard at plus one. And with these EVs, I have a chance to live a Dragon Claw at plus one. Probably not a Flare Blitz, but I have enough to live a Dragon Claw at plus one and return with a Draco. I didn't feel like I needed the Z parting shot as much because if I had the Z parting shot, I wouldn't have been able to outspeed threats like Jolteon, like. Braviary if it runs Scarf, like Charizard at plus one, like Sneasel if it decides to come, like um, Rock Polish Torterra I think I can outspeed. There were a lot of things that Scarf Sil Valley did for me here that nothing else on the team could. Uh, but the attacking moves are quite interesting here. I needed Draco because I needed the strongest possible way to hit Mega Charizard that uh, Sil Valley can throw. I needed Ice Beam to hit Torterra and I needed Flamethrower to hit Sizzle. Every, like, that was all it was. That was all my thinking was, this guy is just going to be throwing parting shots around and possibly Draco meeting, uh, Draco, Draco meteoring Mega Charizard. Everything else was irrelevant. I didn't need anything else. I'm gonna, like, if, if you look through its move pool, um, I could have packed Explosion instead of maybe Ice Beam to hurt Torterra. I could possibly have packed, um, X Scissor maybe to hurt the whatever that there was but if we look through there's nothing really that I wanted to bring there's nothing that could have done more damage to, to to the opponent's team than this this seemed like the most important set to bring if you get what I mean it, it, it's interesting because it can't really touch Milotic it can't really touch Hitmontop but I couldn't really have brought another set here I could maybe maybe have gotten away with the parting shot but I needed Scarf for Mega Charizard, and the 196 speed Timid is enough to outspeed uh, Adamant Mega Charizard uh, at plus one. Because if I went, uh, I, I don't outspeed it if it's Jolly Max, but I might as well have outsped an Adamant one. But yeah, that's the team, and let's get into the actual match. So here we are in the match, and Carson has brought his Torterra, his Scizor, his Jolteon, his Charizard, his Melotic, and his Decidueye. Uh, look at this team, I'm happy with, f I think, four of those coming. I'm happy with the Jolteon, I'm happy with the Melotic, I'm happy with the Torterra, and I'm happy with the Sizzle. I'm not happy with that Charizard and I'm not happy with that Decidueye because I know that D uh, Charizard gets agility and I know that Decidueye gets nasty plot. I don't want to come up against a special attacking Charizard with like Fire Blast and Dragon Pulse or something. Ah, dearie me. Dearie me. <laughs> right. So, basically, looking at this, I think I'm going to lead off with my boy Sil Valley, because he's probably going to lead with the Torterra, and if he does, then I can just Oko it straight off with an Ice Beam, and if he doesn't, then I can just decide on what happens from there. So, I think that's what we're going to do, and yeah, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Now comes that awkward part where I wait for the, the intro to, you know, do the thing and, and skip past it so that I can actually get into the match. <laughs> God damn it. I hate doing this. I really hate doing this bit because now I have to wait for the video to get to the part where it actually goes to the battle. <sighs> 28 seconds, 29 seconds, 30. Uh, God damn it. Okay, here we are. Right, <laughs> so Carson is going to be. Car well, I'm challenged by Pokemon Trainer Carson. Sync issues. And I'm going to lead out with, like I've said, my Silvalli because I can Ice Beam something, uh, 
Wallace the Silver Valley comes out, I can Ice Beam the Torterra, which he does indeed lead off with. I predicted that correctly. Unfortunately, there's no sound for this video because Carson couldn't record it with sound. Shout out to Carson, by the way, for recording this. But yeah, I'm going to go straight for the Ice Beam, popping his Yashe Berry, which is going to allow him to live one and get up, I think, his Stealth Rocks, which was an absolute pain in the ass because I predicted the lead correctly, got the Ice Beam off, but uh, it just annoyed me because... I did everything right and got popped because of a Yashi Berry, so that's good prep on his part. Apparently he said he changed that about five minutes before the battle from Yashi Berry, uh, from Rocky Helmet, so I'm quite annoyed at that. I would have been able to get that thing out first turn. But yeah, he's going to go straight out into his Charizard, and I'm going to think, nope, not allowing this. Not allowing this to come in and and set up all over my face. So I'm going to hard switch out into my, my Gigalith, get my Sandstream up, and start getting some, you know... Uh, residual damage off on it. He's gonna Mega Revolve right here. Uh, and he's, I think he goes for a Dragon Dance here, getting himself up to plus one. Uh, so that's, that's scary beans. That's very, very scary beans right from, you know, turn three. He's already got a Charizard at plus one attack, plus one speed. But I know from this health I can live one and I can Stone Edge it and kill it. So I'm pretty, pretty pleased about that. He's gonna go for the Earthquake and unless he gets a crit, he, I'm going to live this, and he does not. I do not get taken out, and that means I can go for Stone Edge, and that puts me 6-4 up instantly. Instantly 6-4 up after three turns, and I'm I'm really, really happy with how this is going so far. So he's going to go out into his Scizor, and I'm just going to go for them Stealth Rocks, just in case he wants to, you know, Swords Dance on me or something, because I feel like I can take it out, and I'm going to Sacrifice Gigalith. Unfortunately, not going to get my Rocks up, but I did manage to take out Charizard, so I'm very happy. Now, I'm going to pause this so that we... Oh god, that's not pausing it! <laughs> I'm going to send out Adam Sandler, and now we're going to pause it, because I'm going to just talk over the state of play. I've taken out his biggest offensive threat to me, and I've gotten rid of his offensive, ch uh, one of his offensive checks. Uh, unfortunately, he's got Stealth Rocks up, but we're in an incredible position. All he has left is Scizor, Molotic, Decidueye, and Jolteon. Tapu Koko can kill all of these very, very easily because the attack investment plus Life Orb means that I can pretty much sweep from here. The only one I'm not too sure about is Scizor because of Bullet Punch, so if I can get rid of Scizor, the game is definitely definitely in my favor and I am in such a good position to, to you know finish off this match so we're gonna unpause it here as I've got my banded um, Harry armor out I stay in hoping that I can you know hoping this is like a, a more bulky one and I'm gonna go for the close combat and as you'll see takes it straight out I'm very very happy about that because that sizzle, like I've just said, is one of the only things that could possibly threaten Tapu Koko. And now I can just run through the rest of his team with my, my, um, uh, Tapu Koko. But here's where things get interesting. Okay, so I'm going to pause it here. I'm thinking at this moment in time that this Decidueye is just going to go for like a, a U-turn or something. I'm, I'm, I'm not really thinking straight. I'm thinking I can't really switch into my Scizor, because if I do, Hidden Power Fire is a possibility. Uh, this thing could have, you know, so many different ways of hitting me. I can't really go into Garchomp, because it's it's going to hurt me regardless. Uh, I, I didn't really have many switch-ins to this, so I was kind of forced to try and hope that instead of maybe Baton passing on me, that it could, you know, take me out so that I could get the free switch into Tapu Koko and then run through the rest of his team. So I'm going to stay in, and I'm going to go for my close combat, showing that he is actually non, you know, non-speedy, but he's going to go for the nasty plot, and that's where I started to get scared, thinking, okay, what the hell do I do now? This thing's at plus two, I don't die to the next sandstorm, I can't really stay in and and go for a close combat, because he's just going to get a free baton pass, because out, I outspeed him. So I'm forced now to switch into my Silvalli, which I know is Scarfed, has Flamethrower, which can threaten this thing, and, you know, it, it, it can also outspeed, you know, whatever he wants to go into. And he's got a Baton Pass, and there's only one thing that's going to take this Baton Pass, and that's the Jolteon. So this is a scary thought. It's a plus two Jolteon. And now I'm worried, because the game... I still think I can win this. If I can get rid of this Jolteon, I win. But 
I need to play very well around it. So I'm gonna go for Parting Shot, and we're gonna go out. Uh, I'm not, sh I'm not 100% sure what we're going to, but because we scarf, we have to be the Jolteon. Yeah, we're gonna go back out into Adam Sandler. Gonna go back out into the Harry Armor just to sack him off now, so we can, you know, one reveal what he wants to do. But he's gonna go for the agility, and that scares me. Because now this thing outspeeds my Garchomp as well. It outspeeds the rest of my team, including Tapu Koko. I'm not going to go down to the, the Sandstorm, which is going to be very helpful, because now he's going to reveal his Thunderbolt. And it's also going to reveal to me that this thing is, as you'll see in a minute, Life Orb. Which is a bit of a problem, because I know it's got Agility, I know it's got Thunderbolt. Now I have to hope that this is Timid. Life Orb, because if this is Timid Life Orb, I have about a 70% chance to live this hit from here. And he's going to go for Thunderbolt, and I don't live the hit. So that's more Life Orb damage down, but it's okay, because the Life Orb that he's just, you know, taken there is going to put me in range of this guy. Now, let me pause this here, because this is so important. What I need to do here is I need to get him to use two Life Orb recoils on me. Two life orb recoils and then I can take it out with a plus two um, a plus two bullet punch. So the plan is, I roost as it thunderbolts me. I then swords dance as he thunderbolts me again because I can live two thunderbolts if I roost on the first one. Then I can bullet punch, then I sweep. So, we're going to see how this plays out. I'm going to take stealth rock damage and then go into Mega Revolve. As you remember from the team build, not, mo not minutes ago, <laughs> I am indeed specially defensive, so I know I can take one Thunderbolt uh, from this thing, and then I can roost up and take another one. So he's going to go for Thunderbolt. It's going to do a hell of a lot, but like I said, I'm specially defensive. I can take it fairly well, and I can roost it back up. And as you saw from that damage, it's going to leave me on about... Yeah, 137. I can live another one with about 30 HP easily. So... I'm go I click Swords Dance this turn, because if I don't click Swords Dance, he just kills me with eventual, you know, eventual, like, Thunderbolts. I he's going to be doing more damage to me than I'm recovering, so I have to go for Swords Dance this turn. If I go for Swords Dance, I, I live, and then I kill it with a Bullet Punch next turn, and if I don't kill it with Bullet Punch next turn, I can, you know, I can take it out to Life Orb Recoil and make him, you know, I can play around it. So... Yeah, I need to live this Thunderbolt and then get the Sword Sense up, but he crits me, and as you can see from from that, Sizzle's gonna go down, and I am so angry at that, because as you'll know, I won the game at that point. If I get rid of Jolteon, Coco sweeps. Coco absolutely sweeps, and. I can't really put into words the anger I felt at that crit, because I'd played well, I, apart from Harry Armor, I prepped well for it, I had my whole strategy, I knew how I could take out the Jolteon, I managed to get a tasty parting shot off on it, which put it down to plus one rather than plus two, putting me back into the game, and I've been undone by a 12.5% chance to crit. On the one turn, I didn't need it. And that is fuming to me, because I had this game wrapped up in a nice little bow, and now I have to go into Coco and hope that he doesn't have Synchronoise or Hidden Power Ground or something. Uh, I'm going to get the Electric Surge up. Um, if I if I live the hit, if, I, if he doesn't have Synchronoise, then I can live a Thunderbolt, possibly. But he has Synchronoise. And the damage again proves to me his modest life orb with agility, so it's fuming, it's so, so frustrating. And now I have to go into Garchomp and again hope he doesn't have hidden power, like hidden power ice. Spoiler alert, he has hidden power ice. So that's going to be the game. And I am so, so salty about this because I'm so, so annoyed. We did everything right to win this game. We did everything we needed to do. We made sure that we prepped well for the the threats that we needed to prep for. We got rid of Mega Charizard early, and we've been undone because of a crit. It's so infuriating when you prep for one threat and then get screwed over by hacks after, you know, doing everything you need to do. It's so infuriating, but 
at the, at the end of the day, there's nothing I can do. Carson, it, he executed the baton pass chain, well, chain, the baton pass fairly well. I can't really fault him for anything he did in this game because it, obviously crits aren't his fault. He just clicked Thunderbolt. Hold, he could have maybe powered me, power full power. He could have, you know, there were lots of other ways he could have he could have hacked me there, but it's just infuriating that I've lost to a 12% dice roll. And it's so, so annoying. It's going to take me a while to get over this one. It's going to take me a while because we, if we'd have got off on the, the, the right foot here, we could have really done well. We could have really maybe snowballed from here, but now we're playing catch up with the rest of the league and it's derailed us. But yeah, Carson, <laughs> you jammy dodger. <laughs> I will get you back for this at some point. But yeah, anyway, that's going to be the game. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this this video and if you have don't forget to leave a like and all that good stuff next week we're going to be up against Raikwin and the return of his Nido Queen's Park Rangers me and Rai have always had very interesting games we've always enjoyed them we've always had very entertaining encounters and I'm really looking forward to seeing what he brings against me because he's got a very scary team this season but yeah let's make sure the spritzies can do this we're, we're, we're not going to let this one thing bring us down are we we're, we're going to keep going and we're going to, you know, roll it out and we're going to eventually win the league because that's just what we do. So, yeah, I will see you next week. Keep the faith. I hope you have a great day and a great life. See you later, guys. Bye bye.